Hello, and welcome to part one of a two-part video series on narrow complex tachycardia. In this video, we'll discuss those tachycardias up to the AV node. Part two will discuss tachycardias involving the AV node and beyond. By the end of this combination of talks, you should be able to identify the types of narrow complex tachycardia on EKG and explain why they look the way that they do. Let's start by defining narrow complex tachycardia. By narrow complex, we mean that the QRS complex is less than 120 milliseconds in duration, or three small boxes. Tachycardia means that the heart rate is greater than 100 beats per minute, or on average, three large boxes between RR interval. And if you find an EKG that fulfills these criteria, you only have to ask yourself three questions to get to the diagnosis. First, is it regular or irregular? Second, is there a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P? And third, are the P waves normal? To review briefly, the sinoatrial node, or the SA node, sits in between the venous sinus and the right atrium, and the AV node, or the atrioventricular node, sits at the junction of the atria and the ventricles. Because of the positioning of the SA node and the AV node in the heart, the electrical activity aligns most accurately with lead 2 on the EKG, and anterior posteriorly with leads V1 and V2. For this reason, leads 2 and V1 are the best leads on the EKG to determine the cause of the supraventricular tachycardia. Now that we know what a narrow complex tachycardia is, and what leads on the EKG to use, let's go ahead and look at our first EKG. And let's start by asking ourselves the same questions. First, is this rhythm regular or irregular? If we look at the QRS complexes closely, and this is where a set of calipers will come in handy, or a sheet of paper, you can look that they're evenly spaced. And if we slide this rule over, you see that the spacing stays even throughout the entire rhythm. So we can conclude that this rhythm is in fact regular. Second, we ask ourselves, is there a P for every QRS? And looking closely at all the P waves, you can see that there is one P wave for every QRS, and that all the P waves look uh, approximately the same. Next, we ask ourselves, are these P waves normal? As you can see, the P waves are upright in lead two, reasonably narrow, not very large, and so we can say, yes, these P waves are normal. When you have a narrow complex tachycardia with a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P, that's regular rhythm with normal P waves, you have sinus tachycardia. In sinus tachycardia, the signal starts at the SA node and gets propagated through the atrial tissue, leading to an atrial contraction and a normal P wave. It pauses at the AV node and then leads to ventricular depolarization and repolarization, which are the QRS and the T wave respectively. Let's look at our second EKG. If you'll notice, this is very similar to our first EKG. Let's ask ourselves those same three questions. One, is it regular or irregular? And this one is evenly spaced, so it's regular. Two, is there a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P? And if we look, there is a P wave for each QRS. And three, are the P waves normal? And if you notice, this P wave is different than the P wave we saw before. So this is something called atrial tachycardia, or ectopic atrial tachycardia. In atrial tachycardia, you have tissue outside the SA node that's firing faster than the sinoatrial node. So this leads to the main signals in the atria and leads to atrial contractions. Because it's in a position different from the SA node, the P wave looks different on the EKG. Let's look at our third EKG. Again, let's start by asking ourselves the same questions. First, is it regular or irregular? So we can get out our calipers or draw our lines on a sheet of paper again. And if we notice, no matter how we line up the lines, the rhythm doesn't line up perfectly anymore. Second, we'll ask ourselves if there's a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P. We look and try and see any regular P waves, but overall, the atrial activity is completely disorganized. There are some places that look organized, but nothing consistent. So there's no organized P wave activity. This is atrial fibrillation. 
In atrial fibrillation, you can imagine the electrical activity in the atria as packing peanuts. And if you took a blow dryer to it, there'd be electrical signals going every which way. Atrial fibrillation is commonly caused by structural heart disease, such as hypertensive heart disease, coronary heart disease, and rheumatic heart disease. Other causes include stimulants, hyperthyroidism, pulmonary disease, and acute illness. Let's continue to our next EKG. Again, we'll ask ourselves the same questions. One, is it regular or irregular? Looking, we could see the spaces are irregularly spaced, so this is an irregular rhythm. Second, we ask, is there a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P? If we look closely, there is a P wave for every QRS complex. But if we notice, not all of these P waves are the same. If we count, we have one, two, three, maybe even four different kinds of P waves in this short strip. So this is multifocal atrial tachycardia. Just like atrial tachycardia, there are foci outside the sinus node that can lead to atrial depolarization. Unlike atrial tachycardia, there are several different ones, each firing at their own rate. What results is an irregular rhythm with multiple different kinds of P waves. Multifocal atrial tachycardia is commonly found in patients with severe pulmonary processes, such as advanced COPD or acute respiratory failure. In order to diagnose multifocal atrial tachycardia, you have to have at least three different types of P waves. Let's move on to our next EKG. Again, let's ask ourselves the same question. One, is it regular or irregular? We can see that the QRS complexes are very evenly spaced, so we can confidently say this one is regular. Next, we ask ourselves, is, the, is there a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P? So if we start looking closely, we can see that there looks like there's P waves before each one of these QRS complexes. And if we look closely, there's more P waves. If we look exactly between two of these P waves, we've already noticed that there's another P wave buried near the QRS complex. And if we connect all of these P waves, we get a certain sawtooth pattern wave. This rhythm is something called atrial flutter. Using the same peanut analogy from before, when the packing peanuts get hit with the blow dryer this time, they hit a cyclical pattern. This cycle goes around the tricuspid annulus, and it trips the AV node 300 times per minute. If the AV node conducted every one of these stimuli, the ventricles would not have time to completely contract and relax, and so we wouldn't pump any blood. Luckily, the AV node blocks some of these signals. Sometimes it'll block every other one, sometimes it'll block two out of three, or three out of four. If you block one out of two, your ventricles go at a rate of 150. If you block one out of three, you go 100. If you block one out of four, you go 75. The most commonly missed rhythm in the hospital is atrial flutter with two to one AV block. So be very careful when you see a narrow complex tachycardia to look closely exactly between the P waves you see. That's all of the EKGs for part one of the talk, but let's review what we talked about. If you have a narrow complex tachycardia, that means that the QRS is less than 120 milliseconds long, or three small boxes, and the heart rate is greater than 100 beats per minute. The first thing we have to ask ourselves is, is the rhythm regular or irregular? For sinus tachycardia, you have a regular narrow complex tachycardia with a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P, and the P waves are normal, meaning upright in lead two. Atrial tachycardia is also a narrow complex tachycardia that's regular, with a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P, but the P waves are abnormal because you start in an ectopic atrial focus. Atrial fibrillation is an irregular narrow complex tachycardia. In AFib, the rhythm is completely irregular, and no P waves are seen. Multifocal atrial tachycardia is an irregular narrow complex tachycardia with at least three different kinds of P waves. It occurs because there are multiple irritable areas in the atrium that are causing ectopic beats at their own frequency. This is primarily associated with lung disease. The last arrhythmia we discussed was a cyclical loop around the tricuspid annulus called atrial flutter, where the atria depolarize 300 times a minute, leading to a sawtooth pattern. The ventricles will depolarize at a fraction of that, 
Remember that two to one atrial flutter is the most commonly missed rhythm in the hospital. So thank you for watching part one of this talk. The next talk will focus on supraventricular tachycardias, specifically AVRT, AVNRT, and junctional tach, and also rhythms with variable conduction.